Mechaverse just dropped and a lot of people missed out. The FOMO was insane on OpenSea and there was an easy 30x from the Mint. Let's jump in and have a look at the post stats. Now first up I want to say if you could hit the like button it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Also down below I've got chapters so you can fast forward to the sections that you want to help you navigate the video easier. This is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. Please do your own research before jumping into the NFT space. So I'm going to skip over what Mechaverse is and get straight into the stats. Over on OpenSea the floor price is currently 5.45 and when it comes down to the items and owners don't take these numbers into account OpenSea is currently behind. And then when we have a look at the buy now, we've got a 5.49, 5.5 floor. And when it comes down to the volume and activity, you can see here, it is just, they're selling one a minute. It's absolutely crazy. Anyway, let's jump into Nansen and have a look at the stats. Deployed 10 hours ago, we've got the 8,500 in circulation. And there's currently approximately sort of 300 or 400 that still haven't been minted. So on the Discord, there's actually a lot of chat about what's actually gonna be happening to those. Uh, and when we come down, we can't take anything away from these stats because it did just drop. Now here's where we start to get some interesting data when we get to the individual transactions. We can see down the bottom, everyone that has minted at 0.2. And then we've got this gap when we've got two more people that have kind of realized that they've got it and jumped back in. And then on the secondary market, we can see all the notable buyers there. It kind of had a little bit of a dip and then it just started to kind of pick up and climb and it's starting to kind of taper off and dip back down now. But I believe this would be because the US is currently sleeping. So what we can take away from this is that minutes after people actually got them into their accounts, they were selling them instantly and the price was absolutely insane, which was around that six ETH mark. It then dropped down and you could have sniped one just above four and then kind of ridden it back up to close to six. So if you did actually have some ETH in the bag, you could have actually used this as a tactic. Now, when we come down to the top balances, we can really see what the top holders really think about this project. Top holder, 56 of them. Then we get 25, 21, 21, 20. Then we kind of start getting down towards the tens. And to give you an example of this guy, if he had two, he's bought 54, that's 270 ETH, which then comes down to almost a million dollars. So this guy really, really believes in it and he believes he can make some sick flips. So this guy's dropped a million dollars on Mechaverse. Now, having a look at the top balances over time, like I said, we can't take too much from this because it has only just finished minting. Uh, same with the types of NFT collector and we can see that they're all in there in the mix. And then when it comes to the smart money buys, one of them has actually offloaded his one and now he's out of the game. That's not too bad. If he got in at mint at 0.2 and he could sell it for a five or a six ETH, that's a tidy little flip. So can't hate on him for that. When it comes down to the sales platform, what we can see here is that almost a third of it has actually been on the secondary market. Now this isn't too odd because people could only mint two and they're holding 20, 30, 40. So there is gonna be a lot of that secondary market action. Now having a look at the unique addresses, what we can see here is that currently right now we've got 5,400 unique addresses. So that's 5,400 unique people that are holding out of the 8,500 that are currently in circulation. Now what I touch on a little bit later is this number of 5,400 could have been a little bit higher and would have actually kept the community a little bit happier if they actually did a drop of one and not letting people mint two because then it would have given an even distribution. Because if you've got two, it's it's easy to sell one and hold one. And the percentage of people only holding one of the NFTs is 56%. When it comes down to the notable owners, we can see that we've got a lot of the legendary holders and the smart money holders in this. They shouldn't take too much away from this because it has been within 24 hours of the drop, but the fact that they are still holding and they haven't all offloaded means that they see more upside from where we currently are. Now, when we come down to the diamond hands section, what we can actually see here is that it's just increasing. So when people have actually got their hands on them, they're not looking to do that quick flip. And one thing that I actually find quite funny is that number three only flips, he hasn't actually flipped any because he's holding onto them. So the way that I take this is that the holders are currently seeing a lot of upside and I believe that they will wait for the reveal. Now having a look at the top five buying addresses, this chart here mimics the start of the actual sale where we had uh, that frothiness at the beginning, it then dipped down to around that four and then it kind of 
jumped back up and then we're coming back down here so all these top five buying addresses are buying in at around that five ETH mark so I would imagine that they wouldn't be selling for anything less than a seven, but it's nice to see where they're buying in so you can kind of see where you feel like a price floor may actually come into it. Having a look at the legendary collectors that are buying, a similar kind of story right up the top around that six when there was that dip to around that 4.5 they've snagged them up here and then coming down to smart money what we can see here is that it's around that 3.5 mark to four so they're buying in a lot lower than the legendary or top addresses and you've also got this one guy that's minted here at the actual point two. So it's actually nice to see that smart money's come in and snipe some of those lower prices when we did have that little bit of a dip uh, and they're kind of gonna be waiting for the reveal. That's what I'm guessing. Now this was a huge, huge drop with some huge, huge numbers behind it. Now what I find interesting is having a look at Etherscan and looking at the contract address. What we can see here is that there's a current balance of 424 ETH, which is about 1.5 million. But around eight and a half hours ago after that big rush in, we can actually see that there has been some ETH sent out. So there's been about 550 to one address, 540 to another, and almost 200 to another. So having a look at the first address, they've actually reduced their holdings to around 220 ETH. You can actually see here that they've kind of cashed out the 130 and 150. If we have a look at the other address, they've reduced their holdings to around 220 ETH. And you can also see that they've cashed out 130 and 150 ETH. And then this last address um, that is still holding onto a majority of it, they've just cashed out four ETH. Now, I'm not saying anything nefarious is happening. On the blockchain, everything's transparent. You can see where things are going and what they're doing. So it's actually nice that we can see this because it means that people are then going to hold them account if they don't hold up their end of the bargain when it comes to the roadmap. So overall, what do I think about Megaverse and the drop that happened? One of the things that I would have liked to have seen is that they would have reduced it from uh, a possible two to a one. If every single person got a chance to only mint one, I feel like it would have reduced the secondhand sales. You would have been able to get more of the mechas in the hands of the community that actually wanted them because if you sell a mecha, you're completely out. If you're given two, it's easy to sell one and still hold one and be a part of the community. Now, the reason that I feel like it's a bit of kick in the guts is because there are people that have been in this for months and months that have supported it. They're the ones that built it up to that 200,000 on Twitter, that 250,000 on Discord, and they're left here not actually getting their hands on one. Some people did get them, that's fine, but when it comes down to it, if you really, really care about a project, all you wanna do is just hold one. You don't wanna sell it, you just wanna hold it. And a lot of these people don't have a chance to actually hold it. And because there was the chance for people to mint two, people will easily offload one to make that 5 ETH gain and then hold onto it. And that 5 ETH gain, it's just gonna go to the whales. So what I'm saying here is if you're following a project you're really in, or you've created a project, there should be this onus put on the team to actually ensure that the maximum amount of the community can get their hands on one. This is the type of project that people come in excited, they don't get something and they leave and they don't come back because they don't think that it's fair. They don't understand how it works. The raffle mechanism was nice, but I don't think the execution was quite right. There was the demand there. They were gonna sell out. There was no doubt about it. And what they could have actually done is just dropped it and let everyone have a chance at getting one. It then meant that the weaker hands were able to offload and the whales just scooped them up. So overall, I hope you enjoyed that post drop analysis of Mechaverse. If you did, consider subscribing and hit that like button. It's been a pleasure having you with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. That's your boy, NFT Nate, out.